On today's episode of Hackbyte, we're going to look at running Karma attacks on the Wi-Fi Pineapple to trick devices like my cell phone into connecting to a malicious access point. The Wi-Fi Pineapple is a Wi-Fi auditing platform by Hack5 that offers extensive features for defensive and offensive Wi-Fi security applications. Through a slick interface that you can access from any web browser, you can easily manage your Wi-Fi Pineapple and use it to conduct wireless engagements, to gather passive reconnaissance on a target network, or even execute man-in-the-middle style attacks. For example, we're going to take a look at running Karma attacks and also see how the Wi-Fi Pineapple can gather a list of networks that your phone, laptop, or other wireless device has connected to before, and also see how we can use this information to trick these devices into connecting to a malicious access point hosted on the Wi-Fi Pineapple. In order to demonstrate this attack, I'm going to be using the Pine AP module on my Wi-Fi Pineapple in order to gather a list of networks that my phone has connected to before. Then we're going to subsequently spoof this list of networks so my phone thinks it's trying to connect to a known access point. In order to follow along, all you're going to need is a Wi-Fi Pineapple with the latest 2.0 firmware that you can find linked in the description below. Once you have this, we can get started. To get started, you can log into your Wi-Fi Pineapple over at 172.16.42.1 on port 1471. Now you can connect over a Wi-Fi access point or also over a tethered interface like I have here. And I just have my Pineapple plugged into USB Type-C, which is connected to a USB port on my computer. If you want more detailed insight to setting up your Wi-Fi Pineapple and also how to use some of these other features here, you can check out our video, which is linked above. Now today we're going to be focusing on the Pine AP feature specifically, which is basically just a collection of tools that's useful for creating rogue access points. So you can see I'm on the Pine AP interface, and we have five different tabs here. We have Pine AP itself, we have a client list, we have a filter list, we have enterprise and access points. So for this demonstration, I have turned off the management access point, which is used for just logging into your Pineapple and controlling this exact interface here over Wi-Fi. I've disabled the open access point, and I've also disabled the WPA, the evil WPA access point, since we don't need to use any of these today. So we're going to be focusing on the first three tabs here, and first we'll take a look at the Pine AP interface itself. So as you can see, we have the following dashboard here that shows us the total SSIDs collected in the SSID pool. So what this is going to do is this is going to show us a list of networks that we're going to be using to emulate just um, a common list of networks that we're trying to get our victim devices to connect to. And then over here, we have the number of connected clients. So if anyone authenticates to our rogue access point, this will let us see how many devices are connected. And then we can also manage them under our client list here. And then finally, we can also just see the number of Wi-Fi handshakes that have been captured, either from the reconnaissance interface or indirectly picked up from Pine AP. So the premise of how this tool works. So Pine AP will basically let us gather reconnaissance on the different networks that various devices have connected to before. So basically what networks your phone, laptop, or other Wi-Fi enabled device has connected to. And then it'll gather them inside this SSID pool and then broadcast them back so that hopefully some of these devices will connect to our rogue access point. So this type of attack setup is called a karma attack which, as you can infer from the name, uses previously stored networks to trick these devices into connecting to our rogue access point that has the exact same SSID. So in order to detect the presence of these previously connected networks, Pine AP integrates the following features here. We have passive, active, and advanced scan settings that allow us to look for a specific type of Wi-Fi packet, which is called a probe request. So your device stores a list of networks they've connected to before under something called a PNL, which is the preferred network list. So this will basically just contain a list of every network that your phone or whatever other device you have has connected to before. And it's gonna go ahead and broadcast this out in the open using these probe requests in attempt to reconnect to them. So just using a passive sniffer like the one here, we're able to scan for these types of Wi-Fi packets, these probe requests, and then we can just log the names of these networks to our SSID pool, which we can use for some malicious stuff as you'll see in a second. Now what's useful about the passive scanner is since it doesn't really antagonize or probe these devices, it just sits there passively, this means that you can't really detect the presence of this pineapple doing the sniffing since it's not doing anything. 
So that's why passive mode is useful. It will collect the names of these SSIDs directly to our pool here. However, if we switch over to the active setting, you can see that this engages a little bit more with these Wi-Fi devices. Two of the added features to this tab here are beacon responses and also SSID pool broadcasting. So in addition to collecting the names, it will also emit a beacon response saying, hey, this network is here. And it will also broadcast the entire list of networks that we have collected under this pool. So essentially, whatever network device names we've picked up here will be broadcasted as fake networks that are available via the Wi-Fi pineapple. And then finally, we have the advanced tab, which is basically just the active tab with a few more features enabled. Um, and as you can see here, we can toggle some of these features on and off, like the ability to allow associations, beacon responses, and the broadcast SSID pool. So what this does here, this will basically toggle whether or not we want devices to be able to connect to Pine AP. So if any Wi-Fi devices in the area, like someone's cell phone, attempts to connect to one of these access points, since it detects it as a network that it's seen before, then great, we can turn on associations if we want that to be an enabled feature, which for this demonstration, I'm gonna turn on. And then as you can see here, we have the other standard features like capturing SSIDs to the pool that we pick up from probe requests. We can also emit beacon responses indicating that the network is available. And then of course we have the broadcast SSID pool feature, which will just broadcast every single network that we capture to the pool here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just save this feature. So that way we can automatically start gathering reconnaissance on networks that devices in our area have seen, log them into our SSID pool, and then broadcast them out in the open. One caveat to the way a Karma attack works is making sure that we are broadcasting networks that have the same authentication type of those stored in the victim's phone. So for example, if the victim previously connected to a network that was password protected, we won't be able to properly spoof those networks since we don't have the password and aren't able to authenticate the handshakes that are exchanged by the client. However, what we can do is broadcast networks that are openly authenticated and have no password and try to get the victim to connect to those instead. So using a word list like this one that contains a whole bunch of common open authenticated Wi-Fi networks, we'll probably have a good chance of getting nearby Wi-Fi devices to connect to our rogue access point, since it's likely they've seen some of these networks before. Now for this demonstration, I'm just gonna go ahead and use a network that I know my phone has connected to before, like Google Starbucks or Starbucks Wi-Fi. And I can do that just by switching over to the Wi-Fi Pineapple tab and manually adding those to our SSID pool. Now, as you can see here, we've collected a fair amount of networks that nearby devices have connected to, but if you're in a more densely populated area, you'll probably get a larger list than this. But I'm currently sitting in a basement, so that's probably why I am not seeing a whole lot of probe requests. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and just clear this list, and we're gonna manually add Starbucks Wi-Fi, as well as Google Starbucks. And of course, you can also do this for some of the other common SSIDs here if you want a good chance at getting random devices to connect. Now going up to the available Wi-Fi networks in my area, once this loads, we should be able to see the availability of these two networks that we entered in the pool. And sure enough, you can see Starbucks Wi-Fi as well as Google Starbucks. Now, in order to get my phone to connect to one of these networks, I'll have to kick it off the network that it's currently connected to, which I can do under the Reconnaissance tab. And once we do that, it should automatically join to one of these networks. Now, before we do that, we're first gonna go ahead and take a look at this filtering tab here, which is really useful for narrowing the scope of your engagement. So in my case, if I know the specific device I'm trying to target by MAC address, I can go over to the client filter list, go down to allow, and then enter the specific MAC address of the device I wanna target. So this is really useful for being able to, as I said, narrow the scope of our Wi-Fi engagement. So for example, if you're doing a penetration test for a business and you're not allowed to attack specific devices, or maybe you also don't want to affect other nearby networks, using the SSID filter and also the client filter allows us to block out networks that we're not allowed to attack and also maybe some devices that are off limits to us by either going to the allow list and allowing specific devices, or maybe denying specific devices or denying specific SSIDs. But for this demonstration, I don't need to do that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and switch over to the reconnaissance tab. And we're gonna scroll down until I see my Wi-Fi network, which you can see is blurred out here since we currently have censorship mode enabled. So under here, I can also identify my device by its MAC address, 
which I have spotted here. And if I go ahead and just click on this device under the recon tab, you can see that I have the option to deauthenticate the client. Now we can also just go ahead and click on this network and deauthenticate all of the clients um, thanks to this handy little feature here, but that's not what I want. I'm gonna go ahead and just target this one specifically for this demo. And I can just go ahead and click on deauthenticate. Now, if I switch over to my phone view under settings, you can see that my phone is currently being disconnected from the Wi-Fi and it drops the connection. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna start looking for the next available Wi-Fi network that it's seen before and attempt to authenticate to it. So as you can see, it's trying to connect to Starbucks Wi-Fi since this is a recognized network. And sure enough, it's able to join since the authentication matches, which is just an open authenticated network that it's also previously connected to. Now I can also just go ahead and switch over to a web browser. And interestingly enough, as you can see, I'm able to access the internet as normal. If I go ahead and switch back to the pineapple view, the reason why this is happening is the pineapple is actually acting as a man in the middle, meaning that it's forwarding legitimate traffic from a Wi-Fi network to my phone and also vice versa. So thanks to the three built-in Wi-Fi antennas on the Wi-Fi Pineapple, we're able to run it in up to three different modes at once. For instance, as you can see here under settings, if I go to networking, we can enable wireless client mode on WLAN 2. We can also enable wireless reconnaissance on a separate wireless radio like WLAN 1. And we can also run a rogue access point all at the same time. So what this means is not only is the Pineapple hosting up the rogue access point that my phone is currently connected to, but one of the other radios is actually connected to the internet under the following SSID here and allowing my phone and this network to exchange traffic. As you saw, the Pine AP interface makes it extremely easy for us to run these man in the middle karma attacks, which opens up the possibility for us to do things like host malicious websites, since we're in control of the user's internet experience. For example, if a victim attempts to authenticate to facebook.com, we can use a tool like DNS spoof to redirect them to a malicious version of the website on our Wi-Fi pineapple, which can siphon over their login credentials or whatever other juicy information Mark Zuckerberg might be keeping tabs on. If you're looking to mitigate these attacks, you can always disable the ability to connect to previously seen networks or at least restrict the scope to networks that have open authentication since Karma attacks can't spoof networks that have password protection without having a cracked Wi-Fi handshake. However, if you want to see how you can extract and crack half of a Wi-Fi handshake, you can check out Cody's video, which I'll link in the description below. As always, if you have any suggestions or other demonstrations that you want to see covered on the channel, feel free to let me know in the comments below, and I'll be sure to check them out. You can also follow me on Twitter at Alex Lind if you want to see what I'm up to. And you can also check out my project at Wi-Fi underscore Nugget to see the latest news and updates. As always, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time on Hack5. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and pen test products at hack5.org.